Praise Him. Praise His holy name. That a song should be an anthem on our hearts. Because the Bible says if they had opportunity, they would have wanted to return from where they come from. But there was a city, a better home in view, of course. The builder and maker was God. Bridging, I tell you, man, I tell you sometimes, <laughs> when you think about these things, Bridging, it makes you jump. I remember, I think it was last night, uh, my wife was telling me that, what's going on with you? Your, your hands were like this and your foot was like that. <laughs> I said, listen, I, before I fell asleep, I was preaching <laughs> to myself and I fell asleep the same way. Because, brethren, when I look how God loves me, I said to myself, when you look at a mother that loves her child and the child does bite the hands that, are, that is feeding her, it hurts, you know? I mean, children never understand this until they have children. It is such a heart-rending episode, let me call it that way, because, brethren, yeah, we cannot understand. Because the Bible said the love of God um, surpasses all understanding. And only through his spirit we can understand how much God loves us. And I, this is my prayer constantly. Lord, open up our hearts that we may see how much you love us. Because sometimes it's not about you loving the Lord first. The Bible tells us that it's because he first loves us. And sometimes when you see the big picture... You understand how to maneuver or how to treat God. And bridging, love is a wonderful thing. I just, <laughs> love is such a wonderful thing, bridging. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not even talking about your wife or your son or your daughter. When you can love the way your God loves, stranger, beggar, Liam, blind, dumb, cripple. When you see or when you read in the gospel how Jesus, when him tell John, when his disciple came and said to him, um, are you the one that we should expect? Him say, tell him these things that you have seen. Tell him what you see. Because sometimes you hear things that will not have the works to prove it. But God said to the Pharisees, all right then, but for the work's sake, believe me. I'm bridging even though the work was done before their eyes. They still could not see the prophecy being fulfilled right before their eyes. I'm bridging, my topic is be careful how we treat each other. We have an unseen eye that is watching us, Bridgen, and um, we must be careful how we treat each other. And while I was there thinking about it, because I'm saying, God, I really don't know how to preach. <laughs> but talking about the words of God is, is, is very easy for me. But how to bring it home in, on a platform like this, it's, it's, it's nerve-wracking for me. And I have to pray and ask God, let me not premeditate what to say. But I'm asking him by his spirit. Because if self is up here, you won't get anything, even if I'm saying the right thing. Because the intention of God is not to hurt your feelings. But it's to protect you from the devil and from our carnal nature. And this is the reason why the words are so important to the soul. And while I was there meditating, what came back to me was when Paul was, I call it, groveling at the, at the church feet. And this was 2 Corinthians 2. And in verse 1 it says, But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again unto you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad, but the same which is made sorry by me. 
I'm bridging, I'm telling you. In that meditation, bridging, I don't know why I, I broke down because you know why I cry, bridging? Think about it. We, we should be the ones comforting each other through whatever situation we're going through. We shouldn't look to them out there. Because Paul even warned about that when he said, Dear any one of you taking your brother to the unjust judge, don't you know you shall be judging angels? Let them that are least esteem among you judge. I speak to your shame. That's what he said. So we are the ones, brethren, who are going to, who's going to comfort each other, support each other, and do all these things with each other. And when I look at it, brethren, I said to myself, imagine this is the apostle. You, we would have called him in Jamaica, he was a real big man. And he brought himself so low and said, he said, if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad? but the same which is made sorry by me. And brethren, when I look at it, I said to myself, Andrew, you better be careful. Because if you treat the brothers bad, if you have any favoritism among anyone, God is going to set it away that you have to depend on them. And if, and if me not a shame, brethren, all I'm doing is just using the brotherhood. Think about what I'm saying, Virgin. Because at the end of the day, we call for prayer. At the end of the day, we call for maybe secretly some financial support. We are the brotherhood, Virgin. We are a family. And I love our brother Tarek said it like he emphasized on it so much. We are a family. Family, we don't use each other, Virgin. We take care of each other. We love each other with the love that God gave us. And he taught us how to love each other. That's why we are encouraged from the words that we should set aside every weight of sin that easily beset us. And run this race with patience. Virgin, I hear Sister Sanjay say something one time. And she say, when it comes to people hurting you, always leave a door open. Don't shut the door. Because when you shut the door, you know, you're shutting yourself and you shut out the person at the same time. And we must not shut ourselves out of the kingdom. And he said in verse 3, and I wrote this same unto you, least when I come, I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice. Having confidence in you all that, may joy, that my joy is the joy of you all. You know you the words of what Paul has said? We must find joy among the brotherhood. We must be joyful, you know. Bridget and I was laying there saying to myself, honestly, Bridget, it was like I was in a trance preaching. And I won't call the name that I asked to stand up. And I asked the person to stand up and I said, I want you to go over there and stand before the person and say, I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I need you to survive. And the person couldn't say it because of who they were standing in front of. They couldn't say it. And bridging, it broke the heart of God. We must be careful how we treat each other. In verse 4, he said, For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye may know the love which I have more ab abundantly unto you. So if they knew that Paul had love for them, but Paul said, I want you to know how my love has abound more and more unto you. In verse 5, he said, if any has caused grief, he has not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. He said, sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was in, um, inflicted of many. If you read other versions, it's talk about the person commit incest. And it said that so that contrary, in verse 7, so that contrary ye are 
you are rather to forgive him and comfort him, least perhaps such a one should be, be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore I beseech you that ye should confirm your love towards him. And brethren, people have a tendency when somebody sin, them write them off. And them not only write them off, you know, them spread it. Listen, nothing is wrong if you talk. But when you're spreading something to destroy someone, brethren, you have to be careful. Because everybody have a breaking point. You don't know if that breaking point is going to commit suicide. You don't know if they're going to backslide and never come back. And worse thing could happen to them all because of the words that come out of our mouth. The Bible teaches us that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Virgin, those who love to use it, the tongue shall eat the fruit, dear Raph Solomon said. So we have to be careful, Virgin, how we treat each other. I was having a conversation with someone at work, and he was talking about he can't deal with this and people, this and people, that. And he goes to church, and it just so happens that I ask him the question, what does it mean to mark and avoid? And <laughs> he started to explain it just as how it's explained. It don't, don't need to explain itself. And I said, yes, it does. Because there is a reason why it was written. And I said, go ahead, t tell me, because you seem like you know everything. I said, no, I'm going to talk about what I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, it is to save the person. And I said, when you read scriptures like that, you have to go line upon line, precept upon precept, for here a little and there a little. But what I just read, Paul just said that you should comfort him, that he shouldn't be swallowed up with sorrow. Mm -hmm. And brethren, this is how we should be with each other. The question was asked by Sister Santel in the lesson. How do we help such a person? Bridging, we are here to help each other. We're not here to tear down each other. But the problem is, sometimes when time our toes get smashed, we forgot the words of God, and we just let the emotions run wild. And then when the emotions start to run wild, it start to overflow on others. And we have to be careful of that, brethren. In verse 8, he said, Wherefore I beseech you that ye would confirm your love towards him. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof you have, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom you forgive anything, for I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sake forgive I it. And brethren, we cannot play eye for eye. Tooth for tooth, burn for burn. We cannot do that, Bridget. That, when we live like that, Bridget, the Bible tells us that we are putting ourselves back under the law. And we deserve to be stoned. So, Bridget, we don't want God to hand us over to our reprobate minds. Bridget, we have to be steadfast in what we're doing. We have to make our calling and election sure. Bridging, I might not be springing left and right here in a bridging. But listen, you see when time words like these have been read, bridging, don't just look at it and say me hear them every day. Our brother and you talk about love all the time. But bridging, when your time comes when you need love, I'm telling you, you're going to remember these words. So bridging, right now we need it. We need love, but we need God's love. Because the Bible teaches us that if you don't love your brother, who you can see? How can you say you love God who you have not seen? We serve a great and terrible God. He is a fear God. He is a just God. He is the righteous judge. And he is the one that is going to give every man according to his works. Virgin, when I look into, I remember when we were doing some studies and I was trying to find it. Early, it came back to me when he said, Put a mark upon them that sigh. I think it's in Ezra. Sigh and cry. He said, Put a mark upon them. Bridget, when you desire to see, to live what you read in the Bible, it is so hard for you to settle. It is so hard to settle, Bridget. 
is almost as if a, a, a man is looking for a wife and certain qualities she don't have. If him circle, him life will be miserable. Because he knew what he's picking up in a virgin, but because he doesn't want to be alone, him circle. Virgin Paul rather be alone and circle himself in Jesus Christ. Nothing is wrong with being single, no. Nothing is wrong, and nothing is wrong with wanting somebody. But virgin, don't circle. And when you have the church best interest at heart, virgin, you can't circle. You want to get rid of every bit of sin that easily beset us. Like the Bible tells us that to look diligently. Lease any fornicators, lead, lease any perjured person, any idolaters spring up to trouble you. Because, Virgin, God is coming back for a church without spot nor wrinkle. Nothing at all, Virgin, is supposed to deter us from pleasing God. Virgin, we'll have to. Virgin, are you hearing me? Virgin, I really want you to really hear what I'm saying. Because. If we not get it together, we will not make it into the kingdom. If we not lay a whole and eternal life, we are not going to make it into the kingdom. I promise myself that I won't be long because the, the time has already passed so far. But listen to this, what I have to read. In 2 Peter 2, 20 to 22, it says, For if after... They have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They are again entangled therein and overcome. At the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Brethren, this is what happened to a lot of people. They hear the word. They got baptized. But something was missing. They didn't repent first. Just like John would say to them, bring forth fruit for repentance. Because something has to happen first, virgin, before you get baptized. You have to repent. You have to, the love of God has to start to develop. Because, virgin, let me tell you something. If you start so, so, so. And the, the Bible talk about the seed that is sown and ones that fell on stony ground. And, the, and some that fought, fell in, the, in thorny places. Some that fell on the wayside. Bridging the ones that fall in thorny, say so when time, time come up and catch them, it, it choke the word. Choke the word, bridging. And then the ones that fall on the rock, we hear them gladly hear the word and pick it up. And when the heat, them not have no much root in them, bridging. So you have to, bridging. Something has to be there. The love of God has to be there for you. Then it's saying in verse 21, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the Proverbs. The dog turned to his own vomit again and the sow to his wash to wash in her wallowing in the myrrh. And Bridging, you can be here and in this condition. If I should say to anyone today, get up and go to such and such a person and tell them that you love them. If you feel something in your heart move the wrong way, pray. Fast. Call others to pray for you. Because we are all here to, to help each other up the ladder. And Bridging is full time now. We put away these little isms and schisms because we are one body in Christ Jesus. And you must, we all must remember this. When Jesus gave out his commandment, he didn't say, if you want to keep it. He said, who have an ear, let him hear. And he said in another verse that it will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, Bridging. Let us just continue to hold on to these words. And if there's any here 
that is not getting along with each other. Virgin, fix it before God come. Fix it before God come. Because if God come catch you in your, in your folly, dog will eat your supper. And before I close, I'm going to call out a person's name, which is not Tori Smalls. She's a fighter. I'm calling her out. She's a fighter, Virgin. And sometimes I say to her, say you fight, but you fight the wrong way. But don't worry yourself, you will get it. And sometimes I'm like the Job's friends with her. And I said, look at Chantel. If you don't get along with that girl, you're dead. Let bygones be bygones and fix the matter. And look who she's sitting beside today. Virgin, I'm not saying this to embarrass her. I'm saying this, Virgin, that the young ones can be such an example unto the older ones. Because it seems as if sometimes when the older we get, the more stubborn we get. Someone once said to me, it's easier to teach people than older folks. Because they will absorb the, the, the things that you're giving them easily more than the ones that are older. Because the older we get, Virgin, sometimes we're we careful that pride don't creep up in us and we are rejected by God. Because the Bible said what? God resists the proud and give more grace unto the humble. So while we're here, Virgin, let us grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he comes, you will hear the well done cry, though a good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. Praise him.